not expect to have this crowd here today. I should have done it last week when half of you were still home. So I've been asked today um, to talk about our experience, our path here, and the divine principle, and how that has impacted our lives. So uh, we learned a couple timelines. Uh, we taught those back in Sunday school, but I forgot all of them. So 440, 40 days really started to hit home when I was asked to have this conversation. And my journey goes back 40 years. So this is the cross I've had to bear. And I started in the Catholic Church. I'm sure many of you have gone through some similar experiences. And became an altar boy. I was there for six years. And found that I could find capitalism in doing funerals. Because I made more money doing a funeral than I did a wedding. Go figure. Where are we here today celebrating a wedding and I'm still not getting paid for it? <laughs> so, um, my 40-year travel and the cross I've had to bear. So, uh, going through high school, uh, I've learned during the 80s, 70s and 80s, that there was a lot of satanic activity out there. Drugs and alcohol became a forefront. Um, I did go to college, I graduated, I had some great careers, but I also destroyed them through Satan's works. Um, drugs, alcohol, uh, abortions as I got older, uh, some that I didn't even know about until later in my life. So I am truly a sinner under the eyes of God. Now, I've been married, I've been divorced, I have four children. Uh, they're beautiful children, very intelligent. Uh, so I am blessed from that. And where I want to lead my wife and our dominion and our kingdom is that I hope they come back into our family, the virtues and the values that I lost in my marriage and did not have to teach them. And maybe if I had that back then, they wouldn't be as lost as I was. Now, I am a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. Um, and I say that 40-year path, I turn 57 next week. And this family that I have been, we have been brought to, has changed our lives. So, divine principle. Um, I've gone through my 40 years uh, of failures uh, and successes, and the divine principles have always been in our hearts. They really have. We just didn't know it. And when my wife and I started to grow our marriage in the last probably three out of the five years we've been married, we felt a hole in us. It wasn't the drugs, it wasn't the alcohol, that's already been remediated, but we were missing something. We could hold each other's hands, we could talk all night long, every night. People still don't understand how we can do that. After five years, you run out of things to talk to, we don't. But we were still missing something. So, divine principle, how did we get from point A to point B? We ended up um, going to a freedom rally, and I start to look at some of the sweat jackets that you folks wear around, the camouflage jackets, and I was actually introduced to this church, and I didn't even know it, at a uh, Bognet rally outside of Milford, and I think you guys got bust in, I think you guys got bust in because there had to be a hundred of you all wearing the same sweatshirt. And I didn't even know you were going to become my family. So, then we went to the Freedom Rally for Memorial Day. And then we did the Freedom Rally at Greg's home. And we got to meet Pastor. And that broke our hearts. That was the ultimate in us realizing what we were missing in our lives. It was family. It was my queen. It was God in our hearts. 
Jesus in our souls. And so we started to come and we started to meet people. And I've gotten so many names and I will forgive, please forgive me. I cannot remember everyone's names. You're coming at me like AR-15 rounds. They really are. And I know a lot of you know my name. So if I ask you, what is your name again? Please understand. I do that sincerely and with respect. I do not want to insult anybody. Um, so from the kindness of my heart. So getting through all of this, um, Greg and Elka, I believe, saw our aura, the love that I have for my wife, and the respect that my wife has for me. And another growing point that we have taken so much to heart is this ceremony that you are about to go through. Now, I got a couple weeks on you. I'm telling you, it's not going to be easy because love and respect are, that's a, a tough path to follow. It really is. But it's not because my wife respects me. She just didn't understand the words. She would come and, hey, hey, you know, I need you. I'm on the phone. You don't need me that bad. I'm here to make money and put food on the table. Can you wait five minutes? It has to happen. She would get upset. She would literally out the kitchen and then be mad at me that I did not give her the attention she deserved at that exact minute. There's a thousand things in every man's haunt mind. Every man in this room can tell me, you got a thousand things going on. And when your woman or any woman comes and says, you need to do that. No, I don't. No, I don't. She now will walk into that room, put her hand up politely with respect, and just look at what's going on in my face. I don't have to say a word anymore. She will go five minutes. I will go ten. Out the door she goes. And she's comfortable with She's not mad at me anymore. She's not mad at me. She really never was. Hallelujah. This circle, this whole process, comes back to my love for her, my love for God, my love for my family and my children. And I pray that they listen to our stories as adults, as parents, as grandparents. We have made our mistakes. The trick is to get our children not to make the same mistakes. They will make their own. Every one of you as a child in here, even me as a child of God, will continue to make mistakes. I just hope I raise the bar on them. Amen. With that, I thank you very much for listening to my story. Uh, we are here, and we are not going anywhere. Thank you.